Ready. Righto, Ronnie's ready for the four-wheel drive podcast driven by Shelter. We're going to have a look at the American four-wheel drive market today, Ronnie. And you've got no idea, do you? No. <laughs> Where's the music? Because what's, what's in front of you? Did you miss? You don't have your headphones in. Oh, you? that's a laptop. Did you? Oh, my God. <laughs> he's come in with a laptop and he's, he's, and he's asked where's the music. Oh, my God. He doesn't have his headphones in. He hasn't put his headphones wow. in. Wow. Wow. You only got wow. asked. Dial you, is rattled. You only got asked if you were ready 18 times. Yeah. <laughs> It's oh all my good. God. Boys ready? While you're yeah. doing that, um, yeah, all good. Southern Riverman would let it ride, as always, bringing us in, the Four Wheel Drive podcast on Instagram, <laughs> episodes over at Back Chats YouTube, and again, <laughs> thank you to our patrons. We're, we are flying in numbers, patreon.com forward slash the Four Drive podcast if you want to get over there. Check out some of our extra bits and pieces. Correct. A little behind the scenes content. Now... Is he ready? Board. I can't hear anything though. <laughs> Do you want us to play the song again for you so it gets you in the mood? <laughs> can you actually not hear anything, Ronnie? Yeah, I can actually not. Ronnie, I need you to figure this out, mate. We've got a podcast to, to do. <laughs> we're right, genuinely please. on here. Please, mate. We're, on, we're, we're live on air. <coughs> Still got nothing. Oh Still got my. nothing. That's, are, you, are you plugged in? You know what? I'm yeah, you sure plugged I'm plugged in. in. You it's know plugged what? in down there. That's, that's Ronnie's mistake. Not mine. <laughs> is it not? Is it not? It is. It's probably it is mine. genuinely my mistake because I normally have this in and I'm like, yep. Turn it up or down. <laughs> yeah, but you know what happened. You came in with your laptop. You opened it up. You, you had a look at the run sheet. You made your own run sheet. You adjusted it. I you did. You came I did. in. You didn't know what was yeah, going on. I did. There was just too much text for me. So yeah. I just like condensed it down. Because we're talking about American trucks and I don't know these trucks very well, but um, I know a bit now. <laughs> look at him. He's excited. He's back, he's back on board. <laughs> it's good to see you, mate. Um, how are we, fellas? Going right? Yeah, pretty good. Going Chris. well. Going well. How are you, mate? Good. Like yeah. the mustache. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. looks good. I've ha- I have to wear it. You have to wear the mustache. Yep. yep. Cover is it, it. Is it one that you can peel off? Or? Uh, it <laughs> looks like it. Actually, looks like it could be. I, had, like, I don't really. I don't really use like I don't stick with the mustache much. I used to stick with the mustache all the time, but now I don't. And like just trimming, it looks. It'd be uneven. Where's the camera? Straight away, mate. You guys Straight can be me. the judge on how I did, but I'm covering up that scar from a couple of weeks ago. So yes. that's why I haven't. Um, I haven't got, yeah, haven't shaved. So have you had a big burger yet? No, no. Nah. I reckon I'm, I'm probably two days in to feeling like I can really open my mouth properly. Okay. Yeah. So I've been looked after. I'll but, probably still take it easy, man. Yeah. It's not, it's still, it's still, <laughs> it's getting there. Again. It's still getting there. I've still got some stitches in there. So yeah. yeah. How many I, stitches? Seven originally. Seven. Seven originally. And how many now? That's a good question. <laughs> Three. There's definitely one that I can feel. You probably should. Are you meant to feel stitches like with your tongue? Are you meant to just yeah. poke around at them? Oh, I'm probably not meant to poke it. I don't <laughs> think you, you, you could not. I'm not actually right. meant to be talking right now to be fair, but uh-huh. for you blokes. I, I, there's <laughs> well, a, it's, it's not for us. It's I'm for jumping loyal, on board with loyal an, listeners. I'm jumping on board with a, another podcast. In, you'll see that. I'll let you know when it's um, when I've actually completed it. But it was meant to be last night and um, – yeah, thankfully the fellow that I'm doing it with has kindly postponed it a couple of weeks Good to man. allow me. Cause Good man. We, we, we'll go for a while on that Yeah, too, here we so. are. Doug, we need you. Yeah, no, yeah, so I wouldn't you, let him do it. He's so like, Jay, he's looking after me it. and like, you nah, blokes aren't. <laughs> but no, I, I was, uh, yeah, I wasn't meant to talk too much, but I'm saving myself. I'm saving my best for that that one. For you boys get my best every week. Yeah. But I thought I'd better give you my, my, abs, my absolute best. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. He's, he's talking like he's about to play a game. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm about to play games. Yeah. Do, do you take it one podcast at a time? Or? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> we actually, I actually do. Liam Duggan, loyal <laughs> podcast. I actually pre- I prepped a little bit today too. Did more you? Than I did more than I usually do. You did. You, what? I looked at. Oh, like you, I, I had. Um, you I went had off to car sales. Again, I do feel bad that you do a lot of the, the shit around here. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. Not oh, at it's all. It's actually quite fun <laughs> just rocking up and seeing what I've got. Um, all right. Let's if, move on if to... We, if we have any voice messages or anything, <coughs> I still can't hear anything. Just let you know. Oh, you can't? <laughs> I still can't hear anything. Jaden. That's fine. I'm, I'm going to sort it out. Jaden's getting electric shock by the Yeah, I am. Phone. I'm getting electric shock by the Ronnie microphone. can't hear. I'm going to sort that out. You introduce on. on the radar. On the radar. Yeah, oh, let's get into it. That is an interesting one, actually. Do you want to introduce it now that you've seen it? Well, I can introduce sheet? it, but... Because yeah. I know you're excited by this. I am. On the radar. I'm quite excited. It's They've finally redesigned... The new Prado. Yeah. It's the new Prado. And and what about this new Prado are we covering today? 
Jade better hurry up because I'm hoping he's got photos. Uh, for us he's what put are up. we covering today? Well, we're covering some. They've released some pricing. Yep. There's some newer pricing. And there's something else. Do we ha- is the pricing in the run sheet? Because if not, I've got that. <laughs> and the pricing right, so is it's been spotted. It's been, it's been spotted, spotted in Victoria. Oh, Victoria. Okay. And if you look behind you, oh, there's yeah, some yeah, photos. Yeah. You did know this. That's yeah. been spotted a few few places. Yes. Yeah. So this was sent in by Isaac P to our email address. Well, should was, we disclose? Should ago. we disclose his name? Is this still top secret stuff from Toyota? Or no, the Isaac P is a um, oh, it's a cover yeah, name. It's a cover gotcha, name. Gotcha. Cover name. Yeah. Or, or is it? They've released the Toyota. photos of them anyway now. Yeah, you know? well, this is this is spotted in the wild a little bit. Ooh. Uh, nice looking bull bar on it, spotted at the fuel station. Rafa it sent looks me that nice. one a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, so these are the same ones. This was sent in oh, yeah. two two weeks back and I haven't had um haven't had the time to go to go over it. What's well, this little spout thing hat? Uh, that looks like a snorkel. That'll yeah, be, it's got no... Like, yeah, uh, it doesn't have a, doesn't have a top on it. It's got a... Interesting show. It's top. interesting. It's like a it's like a smokestack. Mm. The the bull bar doesn't look too bad. Yeah, I don't mind that. I quite like it. Looks like it's towing a Prado, towing a van. It does, doesn't it? Another an old Prado, I mean. Yeah, they got the old Prado right behind it. So what we're looking at, it, it makes what that. Is, what's it got? That's got bigger tires it's, on it. It kind of. It's got a bull bar. It's got a snorkel it's got, and yeah. towing. I it's got towing steel mirrors. Side or are those? Do you reckon those are those come stock with it? Bash plate. No, they'll, they'll, they'll be stock. Those mirrors. They're not towing mirrors. Those like. mirrors look huge. Winch rated recovery points. Yeah. Yeah, it's got the bash plate. Bash plate. Everything. That's interesting. Light bar. Light bar, yeah. Radio on top. It's got the bars on the oh, yeah. roof, but That's I think spot. the normal Prado might actually have that too. Yeah, it does. If you look behind it, Ronnie, the yeah, normal yeah, Prado. Yeah, I mean, there. that might have been added on. No, too, it's a, no, Ronnie, it's fine, mate. You can't see. It's fine. <laughs> Do we know what sort of spec or, or model this is? Uh, that no. one there will be the altitude. Altitude. Okay. It has yeah. to be because it has a snorkel. It has the bash plates. That that's yeah. What and, bull and bar do you reckon that is? That's definitely an altitude. So what what bull bar? That's a that's a Toyota bull bar. That's a Toyota bull bar. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, it has to be. It looks it looks better than the Toyota bull bar usually. Yeah, well, that's looks. why I said it. It doesn't look too bad. Yeah. Uh, what's? It what looks it, a bit. It looks a bit wide. It looks like it looks like, like on the an, edge. It looks like an FJ and yeah, right there. It looks like an FJ and a three hundred series and a seventy six series all sort of yeah pieced together. I get what you're saying. You see that line yeah. the bonnet and so it's got his really raised bonnet and that'll be because of the new collision standards. So that'll that's like you, on the seventy six. Your that's yep. that raised. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But even the new Ranger has the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, they're a bit boxier at the front, aren't they? I think it's a standard thing. Okay. So the reason why the structure looks so weak is because it has to be weak. So if it runs into someone, but the funny thing is it's got a bull bar on it, so it kind of defeats the purpose really. Yeah. yeah. You know, the thing that we were talking about was, uh, what well, not last episode, but the episode before was the $10,000 price increase on the new Prado compared to the old Prado. I, like, if I had the money, I would be paying an extra ten grand for this. For this Prado, I think it looks way better than the old Prado. Yeah, and the so engine has been proved proven to be a good engine. The price list, I don't think it is ten grand more though. You don't think it is? Not the price list I saw. What's the price list you saw? Because the last one I saw was a ten grand price increase from the old Prado. Okay. On right. that, is there a um, is there actually a list is a waiting wait list already? Two years. This? Yeah. But you can you can get you can get on a wait list now. People are people. Ha- People, there's heaps of people on the list already. Oh, righto. Okay. But I think it's going to be like a two-year right. wait possibly. So so how long has that list been around for? About a year. Oh, righto. Okay. I think, yeah. So, I mean, there might have been a lot of people that couldn't really be on the list yet, but they they just asked to be on the list. I can hear something now. Yeah, you got that? I got that. Is Thank that back? You. Yes, Are I am back? back. Hang on, here we go. Hey. Oh, <laughs> Now we feel like we're starting. <laughs> All right, welcome to the uh, Full Drive Podcast. <laughs> go on. Driven no, by go. Shelter. <laughs> yep, that was a Southern going. River Band. That was a very short snippet though. Yes. Uh, song, song title. We've got Liam Duggan here and we've got Jaden behind the camera there and behind the... All the other wizard, wizardry stuff, and yep. uh, yeah, and then um, I, uh, what's my name again? <laughs> what's my name? Oh, I forgot. Oh, it's my, what's what's my, my name? age again? Yeah, what's my, <laughs> what's my <laughs> No, but that was no, a good no, no, yeah, no. Let's not talk about age. Yeah, all right. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. I look, can't so see that. Yet. Um, I, look, I don't know what price list you're looking at. Is that gonna, in the run sheet? <clears throat> no, I got an email sent to me from someone I know, and mm. and I hadn't, I didn't realize that I had that out yet. So, 
I'll look for it later. But it's um, it. What what price have you got on on the GXL? Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head from from what it was from the last run sheet. Oh, you're but going it's, off it's the near, last. It's near ninety. It's near ninety grand, isn't it? Yeah, it was something around there. It was around the ninety grand mark for the GXL, and then ninety five. I'm gonna have to find it for the altitude. Yeah, if you can find that that email, that'd be great. But it, it is it is a fairly expensive car for what it is essentially, which is a the same engine as the old Prado, but a facelift. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> More or less. I mean, this it is completely different car though. It what makes com- it what what's di- well, other than the, the engine? Well, the whole shape of it. Oh yeah. Uh, do you know GXL, eighty grand. 80 grand. 80 grand. Is that before on-road costs and all that or straight out? It says recommended retail price. Okay. So, I mean, that, and that's the price they'll quote, right, unless they're doing a drive-away price. So, if you go at GX, it's 72 and a half. If you go GXL, it's – let's just round it up to 80. The VX, which is 87 and a half, so let's just call that 88, same as what I paid for – 76, although that was drive away, so I'm not sure what this will be. The altitude is 92,000. And then you've got the Kakadu, which is basically 100,000, 99,000. Yeah, right. That's a, that's a big step up in that one. big step up. Who, yeah. who are these – who have they targeted here, the Prado? Is it just the people that are okay. – the Pradas are very popular. So yeah. where does this fit in, in a – just in a general sense? Okay, in a general sense, the GX will suit the mines. Yep. Your, your poverty pack, right? Uh, no one, none of the public, I would say, would buy the GX. They'd want the, at least the GXL. The GXL comes with almost everything that the VX used to have. Yep. And then the VX has a bit more stuff. Yeah, okay. But I don't know if I would justify almost an extra 10 grand for a VX over a GXL because the GXL has a lot of stuff. Right. Um, let me just pull the GXL up. So the GXL, uh, it's got the roof rails, it's got the power tailgate, heated and ventilated front seats. The ventilated front seats are awesome. My mate Chris has had one in his Prado that he just sold. So he had a GXL, he up and put the ventilated seats in. It's amazing. It's like having aircon in your seats yeah, right. kind of. Um, I'm a bit of a sweaty back person when it comes to leather seats. <laughs> and um, the wireless... Just the back? Wireless, well, yeah, wireless phone charger. We keep moving on here. Uh, okay, eight, uh, what was it lever? So it's got uh, lever steering wheel, lever seat material, seven seats, um, and then just all the other standard stuff. So that is pretty much what the uh, the VX used to have in that spec. But the VX now has a tire pressure monitor. Uh, it's got a few other little little features, but uh, was it refrigerated console boxes all? But I mean, you know, really? Yeah. Who really needs that? With the altitude, that's when you get a rear diff lock. Oh, right. Eh? So there's not, none of these vehicles, that was one thing I was a little bit disappointed in seeing. None of them have a rear diff lock. Do any of the current Prados have a yes. rear diff lock standard? Yeah, GXL, VX. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, they right. got, yeah, rear diff lock. There you go. So I'm assuming they'll have some <coughs> kind of other, I don't know. Is that, is that a bit of a message though from for what Toyota are going after with these cars? That you've got to go up to the altitude to actually get a, a rear diff lock. Well, yeah. But, you know, like that that says a bit to me about their target audience, I reckon. Yes, and I totally agree there because you asked me before who are they targeting. So the GX is the mines. The GXL is your everyday person yep. like ourselves. The VX is like, you know, let's splurge a little bit more, get the little bit of extras. Yeah. But – I'm pretty sure that if if you were to go and buy one of these two, between a VX and an altitude, there is about five grand. Right. But an extra five grand, you can get the whole white roof sort of thing. Yeah. It's kind of like a bit of a FJ vibey thing. So they're kind of targeting the overlander, full driving yep. kind of person. That's what I see the altitude of being. And that is what I would go rather than go from GXL to VX, I'll go to altitude. I would not go to a Kakadu. Kakadu, uh, they have like um, air suspension. Right. Uh, going from previous Kakadus, you can't do a GVM upgrade on them. Yeah, okay. So if that's going to be an issue to people, uh, yeah, 
So I think the Kakadu is more like your luxury yeah, okay. sort of, you yeah. know, it's a bit like the Sahara 200 series. Yeah. Yeah. So the altitude, I guess, is instead of having a GR. A yeah. GR Prado. Yeah, gotcha. <clears throat> well, what's your thoughts, Jaden? Like what, what are you on the... Because you said if you had the money, you reckon you'd like that'd be in consideration. So what's the... Is yeah, that over the, over the old Prado. Over, just over the old Prado. Is it, I would... Mm. Like I do, the thing I like to me is that they look nice. They look nice. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah. They would be, you know, they're cool. I was I was actually talking to um, a guy the other day and he was looking to upgrade from – well, he was looking to upgrade from his old Prado, the 250, to the new one, right? So he the had 150. Year, 150? Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry, 150. 150. What am I talking about? He was looking to upgrade from the 150 to this new – 2024 25 model which is uh 250 yeah yeah so the 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 thing he was worried about was that it it came with the same engine and he couldn't figure out what what why would he why would he change it upgrade to a new a new car if it's just gonna have the same engine it's gonna be able to do the same stuff that his old prado does right yeah and i was telling him the only thing the only reason i could see to upgrade it would be looks It'll be I, I, I couldn't see like another reason to which we enjoy here to at upgrade. No, and no, we, we love looks. But if you if you're going to spend a whole yeah. eighty grand, ninety grand on a totally. new car, yeah, would you do it just for looks? Mm. No, look, I totally get what you're saying. What we don't know yet is a bit like with the seventy, the new seventy, right? Uh, I had no idea how well it drove because they changed the gearing a little bit. I wonder if they've changed any of these cars. I wonder if I need to see the spec sheet. There's no spec sheet that I've obtained yet. So I wonder if, because um, they usually list the diff ratios, gear ratios. That'll be interesting. They'll tell us a lot about the altitude and what the other cars are. Yep. They'll tell us a lot, I reckon. Um, they may have put the same technology that they've done with the gearbox cooling and all that like they have in, a, in the 70 series. I mean, they'd be crazy not to do that, you know, because they essentially... They upgraded the the three liter to the two point eight. That's gone really well, and then they further updated that into the new seventy. So I'd I'd expect they would have done something for that as well. And then I have the forty eight volts battery in there, which doesn't give you more power. It just gives you more response. Right. Um, okay. But that's not in this Prado. I'm pretty the sure it is. Volt. I'm pretty sure it is. It is in this. Yeah. It has to be. For the whole emission thing, that's why they're doing it. Yeah, I am right. sure it's in there. The only reason I would can I would think that they're not having it in there is because I haven't heard anything about a forty-eight volt being in the the Prado. Yeah, that was the early talk. And the marketing around, say, the Hilux was forty-eight volt Hilux, forty-eight volt Hilux, forty-eight volt Hilux. Maybe but that market didn't work about. too well for them. Maybe that's that was what it was because yeah. they've always spoken about the the forty-eight volt Hilux. I mean, I uh, the Prado. Prado. Yeah. Yeah, so I so I would I would assume that they were going to do this initial release of the Prado, same as the old one, no forty eight volt, and then in a year, two years time, they're going to release the forty eight volt with the Prado once they can sort that out. Okay. Properly. Yeah. Could be completely off. There's I, no. There's no. Yeah. There's nothing. I can't say. I'm I can't saying. say hundred percent sure, but I'm ninety percent certain that they will volt. have the forty eight volt. It's just as a standard thing. Right. Was um, um was it always a uh. Eight speed automatic, the old 150 Prado. No, so that's different as well. So this is an eight speed <clears throat> automatic. It's an eight speed. The new 250. So that could also, I mean, that, that'll that change completely how it behaves as well. Yeah. Because there's, there's an extra two gears in there. So there'll be some gears that'll be a little bit shorter somewhere. I just don't know where that changeover will be. It'll be interesting to know if first gear low is much taller. That'll be cool. Um, yeah. Won't, won't know until get do a test drive. Maybe yeah. I should go buy one. So, Just kidding. <laughs> there you go. This is um, <laughs> this is saying. I shouldn't say that, should I? <laughs> um, blending modern looks with the wisdom of Land Cruiser predecessors and drawing inspiration from the seventy series in the FJ forty. That is a great call from you, Ronnie. Yeah. Even though I wasn't thinking of the FJ40, I was thinking of the just the FJ, FJ Cruiser. But yeah, because yeah. it's got that. Well, I mean, the FJ40 is inspired by the FJ. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, sorry, the FJ Cruiser is part of Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't. I was. Do they all have white roofs though? Isn't it just the altitude? I don't know if that's. A, is that actually a white roof or is that just the light? 
Nah, it's a white roof because the one on the picture of the price list is a blue with a white roof and I think – and it's kind of oh, like a yeah, bush, is. bush sort, sort of setting. It is. If you look at this picture here, that's a white roof. Yes. That's ugly. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't quite – It's ugly. It's ugly. Disagree with me, mate. Suit. <laughs> The yeah, I, I'm seeing a non-white route. I'm seeing the same color as the car on this one, but I don't know what model it is. Mm. So, I think I think we probably move on from this, boys. What are what are your <laughs> what are your verdicts? You know, if you cut that, if you cut off where the window is, right where the tailgate is, hey, you've got a split tailgate too. That's cool. That is cool. If you cut that there up, it looks like a Ute. <laughs> yeah, it does. I it see it looks like saying. a Hilux. Yeah, I see what you're saying there. Yeah. I like them. I don't know. I just I, like I don't know if I'm going to get one, but I like them. I like I them they look, they look good. And if I they like offer them. if they offer what – like the old Prados are capable. Yeah. Like the ones they're, – they're a great car. So if it's going to be if, – if they've said to improve on the current Prado and it looks better, that, that's a win-win. I don't know if, if the price too. is worth it, but – I don't know. You're going to pay that much Whoa. for a lot of new cars these yeah, days. Yeah, so. that's a good point. It's just gone up with everything else, really. Yeah. I mean, all the 70s have gone up too, you know. Yeah. Um, the Nissan Y62s have gone up as well. Yeah. Does it have anything about the fuel tank anyway? Ooh. I want to know how much fuel it can hold. I would say... I'd say it's going to be less fuel than what our next topic I reckon it'll be 100 the trucks in our next one. I reckon it'll be 150 liters. Yep, correct. 150 liter fuel tank. That's really good. 7.9 liter economy around the city. That's good. Hey, so I'm allegedly. getting here uh, 48 volt lithium system. Yes. On the and that's yeah. I don't know where that's from. It's just like a side tab on Google, but that is saying yeah. I don't think they they lent into that to start with for their marketing. I think now they're just purely market, uh, marketing it on the looks of the car. Right. So I'm on I'm on which car? .com.au. Yeah. Nothing on 48 volt. Well, that's because which car don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> oh yeah. Fair. Ouch. Well, you, you know. I didn't mean that. They've got they've got look, they've got they've got stats up here and information and stuff. And they've actually got the same pricing now that you've just just released, Ronnie. Okay. Well, I released it before them because <laughs> you just found it. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> car sales. Yeah, car sales. Car sales.com. 48 volt electrical system. Yeah, I'm with car sales. And we one. love our car sales, don't we? We do love our car <laughs> sales. We do. Car <laughs> sales. Especially me. Yes. I've got six tabs open on car sales right now. Yeah. <sighs> it's a bit crazy how they don't sponsor the show, to be honest. <laughs> It is a little bit, isn't it? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Oh, see, we need it. The, the, that the is... walls are falling off. <laughs> we just had a uh, we just had one of those sound, sound Jaden's not safe in that little corner. I'm not. I'm over here in the corner. And I'm we needed safe. that because we need to move on to the American we trucks. We, uh, yes. we, we went do. really hard at the Prado and I don't think we gave any legit information. Just quickly. <laughs> I think we did. But we had a good chat about it and I enjoyed just it. Just quickly. <laughs> yeah. Dago. Yeah. Yes or no? You buying yeah. it? Uh, I'm not buying it, but yes, I'm a yes on them. And I can't wait for one of my f- someone to buy it that I know, so I can sit passenger and have a look. Ronnie, straight down the camera, yes or no, mate? Can put me in a put me in a situation. You know, I've got bloody three cars at the moment. Would and you Would you buy it? Say you had no cars at the moment. Oh uh, yeah, you're, yeah. You're looking. You're looking at a whole bunch of different cars. Or say say you got an old Prado. Are you, are you going to upgrade to the new one as soon as it comes out, or are you going to wait? Uh, if my old Prado is five years old, yes, and I can and I can financially do this, and I've paid off the other one. Only if I paid off the other one, then I would. Yes. Uh, if I didn't have a car right now, I'll one hundred percent just buy one and give it a go because that that engine has been proven for at least five years. It's not like your first model, although the gearbox is the first model. So, you know what? Stuff it. I'm going for it. Yep. I like it. Three yeses, you'd be a yes. Uh, yeah, I'm a yes. Yeah, I'm a yes. If I was looking to go for a different car other than the 76, which is back, by the way, yeah, I would just see it out the front. It actually. is good, isn't it? Got to mention that bloody elite. Yeah, oh, back oh. in the V8, a very good. I've got something for you. Keep talking. All right, so we're at, yes. main topic. Yep. Let's introduce it, Dugo. Um, well, we're gonna. I, I said it at the start when Ronnie wasn't ready. 
but we're looking at American trucks. Now, we don't know a whole heap about it. Ronnie's got his gift for you, Jaden. Oi, look at that. It. That's that's because 76 you, you have earned the fixing of your 76. So now you can stick yeah. this to your body. This one you don't have to get tattooed. <laughs> oh, oops, sorry. Something Amazing. <laughs> that's, a um, nice, that's a nice looking patch. Thank you, mate. Yeah, so we're going to American trucks, but I think we're going to have it brought in by Fred. G'day lads, first of all, love your work. At the time of this recording, I'm up to date with all the episodes. A little bit about me for context. My name is Fred and I'm a keen four-wheel driver and camper with a budget of a poor uni student. I drive a 2016 Mitsubishi Triton MQ with modest modifications. I live in SA and I've been trying to get out and explore as much as I can. It's nice. Just some appreciation to start off with. Thanks Ronnie for getting me into four-wheel driving and getting me out and camping. You're I've been watching your videos even before I got the four-wheel drive. That's cool. Also, thank you, Duggan and Jaden, for all your hard work with the podcast. You guys do a really good job. Oh, Please thanks, keep mate. Going. Jaden thank does it all. Love it. Um, I've got a few questions, and they all related to each other. So if this sounds crypt- scripted, that's because it is. <laughs> uh, it's just so I don't start rambling and keep track of the questions. Yeah, there's enough of that now going on. Now to get already. started. That's why we got a run sheet. Yeah. <laughs> What's your general opinion of the American-style trucks or utes? Um whatever you want to call them. So I'm talking about the Dodge Ram, Chevy, Chevy Silverado, GMC Sierra, and the Ford F-150. What are the pros and cons of these vehicles? Why would you pick one of these over something like a Land Cruiser or a Prado? What type of camper or four-wheel driver would buy one of these? Or what kind of camping would one of these vehicles suit? Hypothetically, if you got one of these vehicles, uh, what would be your top five mods? And this is part two. All right, this is part two. Yep. Um, where in Australia would you trust to take these vehicles and where would you not to trust them, mainly regarding capability, durability, and reliability? Are they appropriate for the Australian market or climate? Why or why not? I know it depends on your needs, but what configuration would be best? Tub, tub and fiberglass canopy, tray or tray and canopy? What would you each pick? Now, final question. Which one would you get and why? I'd like an answer from each of you and you can't say Land Cruiser. Looking at you, (laughs) Ronnie. Needs to be one of the four. (laughs) Thank you very much for answering my questions. Have a wonderful day and keen to hear the next episode. Keep it going. Great. Uh, Well, one of us is in trouble because Fred is coming for... A job. Yeah, he is. <laughs> it's just a run sheet right there that for is. us. And, you know and the what? guy that writes a run sheet, he's not us, Ronnie. Well, so. Why was I even reading and searching these cars up? I know. Yep. That, that, this is, oh, love the I love I love that. That was a great question. Unreal. A lot of thank information. You. Thank, thank you, you to Fred, too. That that's um. No, well, I did have to look up the cars, really, to get it a bit, bit of an idea, but yeah. That was polished, too, to the way it was delivered. and It was really good. It's going to be really fun to, to dive into. I it is. That. I love it all is. of our questions. Like the one we got last week, where it's just, love you, Ronnie, darling. Oh, yeah, sweet yeah. ass, man. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> well, it, I'm glad you didn't leave this sort of fire pit. No. It, 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 it needs to be a topic. It'll be yeah, a double episode. That's the main topic. That's Here we a full go. topic. So wow. episode, I don't know what number we are, Fred, but 55. it is basically your episode. So. Where do we unpack this? Let's well, first, I'll keep you on track. Yeah. Do you want me to... Just, I, think, I think first of all, let's tell everyone about each vehicle just briefly. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I think we'll go tit for tat here. Yep. Do you want, to, do you want me to start? Because I've yeah. got it up right here. Yeah, you got it right there. All right. So the four... So we're going to stick to the four. We'll stick to four vehicles, I reckon. Yep. There are others that we are yeah, aware well, of. There's these, others. These are the ones, the ones he asked that, about. Yeah. These are the ones that Fred mentioned and also these are kind of the most popular trucks in Australia at the moment. And yep. you can't really get any others here. No, nah, I mean, the, the Tundra is one that sticks out that is yeah, on our but, list. But but that's that's still just a rental. Yeah, okay. I'm it's, seeing a few more. Yeah. But anyway, it's a we've got four to stick two-month rental trial. Oh, is it? Or three months. Yeah, and okay. then Yeah, I missed the list. <laughs> Jeez, he's having a crack. That's like, why yeah. I wrote it down. Mate. Well, when I heard about the list, I was like, can I be on a list? I was <laughs> cool. <laughs> Shit. All right, I'll kick us off. So Dodge Ram 1500 TRX is the model that we're looking at, which is the beast. I think I spoke about this either a week or two ago. Um, 6.2 litre supercharged Hemi V8, 523 kilowatts of power, 882 newton metres of torque. Um, it's obviously, it's an automatic. It's got all those 
fancy modes that a lot of these modern, not just American trucks, but the ones that we have here in Australia now. Double wishbone front suspension and coils. Um, if I want to look at all this, fuel tank's 125 litres, 19.6 litres per 100 is their basic spec, so as soon as you probably... That's a very small tank, isn't it? For... Yeah, for a big truck it is. Mm. Um, and then how much do we want to touch on here? Is that Are you happy with that, the I, basics? I think that's... Look, we definitely need to talk about... Look at the towing capacity and, and the GVM. Oh, right? yeah. Right? Yeah. So the, the GVM is a big one because there's a massive difference yeah. on those GVMs. So the GVM is 3.8. It's a yeah. 3.8 ton. 3.8 ton for the, which, yeah. the um, RAM. Which, yeah. in all honesty... The, the curb weight's three ton as well. Yeah. Which is... So, that's very poor. That's very poor. It's been derated. That's the thing. Mm. So it's been mm. derated for Australian conditions. So you don't need to have a, uh, you know, M class license. Yeah. MR. One, one other thing, and Ronnie, you've put this in here that I've just seen, but the, this is the Dodge Ram 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. And that's 0 to 60 miles per hour. Yeah. But just saying it's a front runner for me. I would, I would I'm just going to go to the toilet. Can you boys cover the other ones? Yeah, sorry, mate. <laughs> this, is, this is Ronnie. <laughs> Look. Going, going by looks, it is the best looking one out of the lot. I love the look of that thing. It looks awesome. I would agree with that. Won't be long. It, it's <laughs> kind of got this uh, manta ray, fast, big, tough kind of look. It's like the modern day American car, I reckon. That's yeah. what it looks like to me. But that GVM, which I only just realized is in here, is pretty terrible. Like yes. the curb weight of three and a half, three ton and fifty kilos, right? That doesn't include your bull bar or nothing. It, it, there's nothing on it, right? And then you yeah. got you got eight hundred kilo capacity. Yes, that's not even. You got less than that. A Prado would have more than that. A Fortuna that's true. would have more than that. Yes, or about the same. It, so, it does have out of out of these four, it does have the best approach angle, has the worst fuel usage. The smallest tub, and the wor- well, the second worst GVM. Yeah. So to me, look. But it, it does have the most power. If it's all about power and looks, which, you know, for some it is. For for some it is, but it ain't gonna be power and looks for an Outback Tourer. You are going to need more fuel, right? You're gonna need more fuel to start. You've got 125 liters. You're burning. 20 liters per hundred like that is what they say at the factory 19.6 so i guarantee you that'll be like 21 or something and depending how you drive it how you're going to drive this thing around with a hemi v8 supercharged a 2.6 liter how you gonna how you gonna baby that around i'm not gonna baby it around you're not i'm gonna speed (laughs) i'm gonna send it around you're gonna send it around and that thing's just gonna go through diesel like no tomorrow petrol sorry yes um so what i will say what I thought was my favorite to start with is my least favorite now because at of this. the moment, yeah, it's still the best looking one. The Ram, yeah, yeah, it's just your least favorite already. Yep, it went from well, best in to fairness, least. Duggar, in fairness, we've only listed one car, so it's both his most and least favorite. Yeah, he didn't get through another car. Though. No, <laughs> right, so the, the no, ha- Ronnie's been making some points on the TRX. Right, Look, yeah. in fairness to that, Ronnie, people who are buying a Dodge Ram 1500 TRX. Are not shy on money. They're no. not. They're not worried about fuel usage. Okay, there is a point in time where money doesn't matter. Fuel is still an issue, right? Okay, you're talking about like I'm long talk- distances and that yeah, kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. So okay. let's we'll, we'll talk about that separate because yep. otherwise we dive too long on this bit here right. and we'll go back. Well, let's to it. let's move on to the next one. All right. So the HSV Chev- Chevrolet Silverado 2500 heavy duty is a Duramax 6.6 liter. Turbo diesel, V8. Now, I do like that. That's uh, very nice. Mm. Um, Duramax popular engine. Doesn't look too <laughs> bad either. Look, this one has a five-speed automatic, a six-speed automatic transmission, the Allison 1000 as well, so it's a reliable gearbox. Uh, it's got the 136-litre tank, which is really interesting because every single other one of these vehicles has a 136 liter tank. Yeah. What is going on? Is there like a specific <coughs> tank maker over there? Or are they... It's bizarre. It's weird, isn't it? Mm. Um, it's really strange. 16.2 per 100. So it's already better on fuel. It's a diesel, so that's expected. Um, yep. So that's probably going to burn around 18, 19. Um, the 
low capacity on this is, it's still not that impressive, hey? We are looking at just shy of a ton. We're still shy of a ton. You can get one ton units, you know? That, True. That's what's so surprising about these mm. cars. But the thing is, uh, it's because it's because that they've been derated. That's that's the thing. In America, that thing there would be rated much higher. I think I think it's the license thing, the MR license thing. Otherwise, they're not going to sell these cars here, right? But what they really should do is bring these out, so you need an MR license because these will be excellent for towing. You could tow. I, look, I shouldn't say this, so don't do what I say. But you could tow more than what these are rated to because in America they'll be rated to more. You could look at the American stats and probably go by that, right? Uh, are these not, just stock though? Can you upgrade these? <laughs> well, then do you need to go and get your, your uh, truck license? I'm not sure how that's going to work and it'll be an expensive exercise regardless because there's not going to be that many that would do that. Uh, it is a better, these are better options for towing and it's not because of what they can tow because I know, we all know they can tow more than what a Land Cruiser can, right? Mm. We all know they can, but we all know they're going to tow better as well. They've got a really long footprint on the road, like a really long wheelbase. Yep. They're quite heavy from factory. So, the, you know, like the towing experts and the physics or even physics itself will tell you that you shouldn't tow anything that weighs the same as what your vehicle does. Because if that trailer starts doing this, well, guess what? Your car's going to do the same. The trailer's in charge. The, the trailer's in charge. That's right. <coughs> so a big caravan that we consider a big caravan here, there's nothing to these trucks here. So yep. that is a towing vehicle. Yep. These are all towing vehicles. Do you want to take the next one? I will. I'll, we're going to we're going to have to get going on these, aren't we? Yeah, let's go. GMC Sierra, uh, eight cylinder V eight diesel turbo. Um, it's a six point six liter. 332 kilowatts of power, so that's the same as the Chevy above, 1,200 newton meters of torque, roughly similar to the Chevy above. It's got that Allison 10-speed automatic in it. Yeah, I think the other one is is uh, maybe incorrect. That should be a 10-speed as well. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, okay, that's the same. Yep. Um, what else did you cover? 136 litres is the fuel capacity like we spoke about. Uh, and then what have we got down here? Curb weight, 3.2 tonne. GBM 5.2 ton. So th that's, that's impressive. That's your best. The GMC Sierra is, I think we're going off a 3,500 there though, Jaden. So that is that that is your biggest. Yeah. That's the biggest one of the lot. Uh, I think the Chevrolet is a six-speed. No, it is. It is? Six okay. No, I yeah. just did a quick so Well, that, that would make sense because the GMC is a 3,500, so it's going to be a bit bigger. So yeah. maybe that's why they've got a different okay. yeah. gearbox. So that's, that's, your big, that's your big dog. Yeah, that GMC is a big dog. Yeah. That is a big dog. But um, you know, also a big dog in, in a price tag. It's as much as the Ram. Yes. But but I mean the Ram's more of a show car really compared yep. compared to that one. So yep. the GMC <coughs> So I, I can pick you up a twenty twenty three GMC Sierra thirty five hundred Denali with seventy nine Ks on the clock from Queensland for two hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. That's exclu that's excluding government charges, so it's a lot. Do what you want to do with it's that a lot. number it going a lot. up. But it is a lot. Depending on what state and territory you're in, too. That's where that sits. Ford F-150, the Lariant. So this is a smaller of them all and the most affordable one as well. Uh, 120000 It's not too much. I would have thought that would be more than that. Yeah. So, I mean, all these prices it, are around. Yeah. So I, I, can, yeah, get you, yeah, I yeah. can get you a twenty with twenty k's on the clock a twenty twenty four Ford F one fifty. So the six, what you were going to tell us, one hundred fifty three grand. Oof. Okay. That's WA. Okay. All right. So don't yeah basically don't go by the pricing that's on here then. Uh, so twin turbo V six petrol engine, surprisingly good on fuel at twelve point five, but. You know, real figures probably a lot more like yeah. 15. Uh, it is the smaller of them all. It's the lightest one. It's two and a half ton, well, almost 2.6 ton if we round it up from factory, 2555. Mm. So it's a fairly weighted vehicle. It's actually not too heavy. Uh, the GVM is not that great though. It's only 3.2 when it already weighs almost 2.6. Yeah. You know, the Ineos Grenadier. Uh, weighs about the same and has a better. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah. So in your screen of the year, <laughs> the the wagon uh, was at three point six, three point six GVM. This is a pickup truck. What is going on? It's it's surprising. It's surprising how how little they're rated. It's just weird. There's something weird going on with our standards <coughs> changing them to here. I just don't know what it is. It must be so C class license people can drive these. Yeah. But one thing I want to say, we pretty much we've covered what all the cars are. That's the 10 speed as well. The thing is, these vehicles are much wider. They're much bigger. So straight away, if you're gonna drive it around the city. It's not. It's not what you're going to pick. This yep. is this is a genuine farm truck, right? Like or work site truck. Yeah, that's where I see these going. And for some trades, this would be an excellent vehicle. And yes, you could travel off road as well. But the wheelbases are much l are longer, uh, and they're wider. So when you're going off road, yes, there are more. I understand there's more of them getting around, but your wheel tracks are going to be sticking out to the side. So all those little shrubs that we can avoid in the yeah. smaller cars, they're more susceptible for stakes on tires, staking tires. Or holding up traffic when you're on Bob's track and it's a fairly simple full drive track and someone's brought their new American truck down. They don't down want to it, scratch it. And they don't want to scratch it and their mates are having to like, oh my God, clear the uh, path for them like hold ones. and then like move forward and then hold them again. Like yep. Just keep jumping in front of the car to hold the... Hold the anyway. trees back. Happened to you, mate? It did. That's, caught in front of that. That's that's gross. If you can afford a truck like that, you can afford to go down to Mad Inc and get it wrapped. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, so the general opinion on on the American style trucks is is what we'll move on to for Fred, and that's a little bit of what you're touching on there. But it, I think I think they're becoming so popular. Well, not so popular. More popular than what they were in Australia. Yeah. And but I just don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm don't, with you. It's like who are they? It's awesome trade truck if, if you want towing. to like it. but if you're towing yeah but then we don't we don't have the best of it well a lot of people that that will buy this vehicle they're not going to go down all these tight tracks i mean you'll get like yeah. a handful of them right because it, people don't want to scratch their cars and you get bogged in a car like that say a little suzuki sierra comes around and tries yeah. to pull out the gmc sierra <laughs> you know pull it underground. The, the straps aren't going to be an artist, yeah, it's just yeah, no, not no, going to no. do the job, you know. So you kind of got to be self-sufficient with these bigger cars because if you're expecting other people to help you out, yeah, I mean, sure, there could be a Land Cruiser or a Patrol or something to pull them out, but you have to have a specific vehicle now to pull you out, Yeah, right? That's the thing. <laughs> For towing around Australia, excellent choice, some of these. That Hemi, <laughs> that Dodge Ram, it looks amazing. Yeah, it's okay, crazy. it's like if you got too much money, you don't know what to spend it on. Yeah, buy a Hemi. Crazy. Buy buy that Dodge Ram. It is awesome. Okay, but it's not good to take in the outback or anything. It's just fun. It, it's fun, but it's it's like fuel range. Nah, fuel usage. Yeah. Nah, and you ain't gonna be able to drive that thing too slow either. <laughs> Yeah, like you're, you're gonna, yeah, that's what no, we're talking so we about. We were talking about that when you went to the bathroom and he was like, how are you going to nurse it around town? Oh, you're you, not. you can't. You just can't nurse a car like that around. It's humanly impossible. To yeah. it, no, it genuinely is. I don't know. Are we I tried to explain that in a, in a traffic but ticket, but they, they don't like that. Look, yeah, the, only reason, mm. the only reason why I'm still alive today is because my Ford 351 Cleveland top loader, full speed top loader with a 650 Holly, they changed the bloody fuel. Yes, this is how old I am. From uh, super, that's when you used to have lead in the fuel for those who don't know. And they changed it to your conventional fuel. And I had to put all these other additives and all this bullshit in there. And it was just, I had to change spark plugs all the fucking time. <laughs> and it was burning, starting to burn oil. It was just all I want to see this, Ronnie. <laughs> yeah, this is the oh, Ronnie that I want. This is it. <laughs> yeah. And I won't say, no, I won't, I won't talk about this other one story, but. Um, well, maybe on Patreon. Because I sold, because I had to sell the car, because the bank wouldn't give me a loan to do the car up. I was trying to borrow 15 grand to do this car up, right? Jesus. But they'll give me 15 grand for an EA Falcon. That was a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> so annoying. So I had to sell this car, but I think it was probably a good thing. So thank you to the yeah, uh, banks say. that wouldn't lend me the money because I am still alive today. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, too. banks. We, yeah, we thanks, banks. There we go. So. so so what I'll say is, uh, great, great cars are towing. 
if you want to do that, if you, if you want to sort of stick to the bigger gravel roads, you can still do 90% of Australia in these cars. You have a much bigger tray. I would go for the one that has the best payload and it's not the prettiest looking one in my view, uh, but looks are in the eye of the holder. The GMC Sierra to me is the best one when it comes to the fuel size, the fuel usage, uh, the tank size, I should say, and the GVM. The GVM is the main thing. Now, I just want to make sure that we have that GVM correct, though, <coughs> because I know there's different models. Uh, but that GVM is quite impressive. It's it's nearly two ton. So on the GMC Sierra that I can buy uh, right now mm -hmm. in, from Queensland, the one I spoke about, the GVM is 5.489 ton. 5.4? 5 .4? GVM. Okay. That, so what does that does that marry up with our? That we're five point two. Yeah. So that's an MR license, so. Anyway. Well, that's look, that's so we've fine. we've talked about towing before and how some people well needing a license to tow. Yeah, MR license. We've discussed that. If you need a license to tow, maybe you can also get your MR license to tow something a bit better. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So introduce licenses for everything. I've got and seventeen every licenses that I yeah. need to go and get now. I've got though. forty-five licenses that I have to go and sit in the fucking DOT for. Oh and take. <sighs> you should get six years, in there. mate. I, I understand, but and that's why they're gonna struggle to sell these cars. That's why this one up here, which is the second one, the Silverado, have you noticed that the GVM is just under four point five ton? Because if it goes to four point five ton, you need mm. an MR license. But this one here, you need an MR license for, and that is the best option. So if you are a it's gray, massive. Massive. a gray nomad, or a blonde nomad, or a dark-haired nomad, whatever, or just Ronnie, or or, or just yeah, whatever, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> a GMC Sierra, go get your MR license. Very easy to get, super easy to get. I mean, if I can get a HR license, you can get an MR. And medium rigid. These so are automatic. You can get an automatic Ooh. MR license you will be able to tow the correct vehicle for the correct job, but at the expense of $200,000 plus. Mm. That's the only thing. Mm -hmm. So for realistically speaking, a lot of people, that's out of, that's out of reach. But for the retired grey nomad who has a great super fund, whatever, that could be the thing. That could be... That, that would be the thing. So if, if I was in that position and I wanted to tow around Australia, that's the car I'll go for. And I would also, on the back of it, I would, because let's just go to the big, the big tubs now. These tubs are absolutely massive. Yeah. I see so many of these going around that don't take advantage of them. But they're obviously not, they're not using them for the reason that what we are thinking and talking about here, right? Yeah. Yep. So if you put a massive canopy on these, and when I was in America... I'm going to show you something right now, but keep talking. Yeah, when I was in America in 20, I think it was 2018, 2019, I did a trip uh, with these guys and, oh, my God, it's going to kill me not remembering his name now. Uh, How you going, guys? I think it might have been Phil. might have been Phil. I hope I got your name Phil right. Phil he, he had, I think it was a, um, I think it was an F, F250 or something massive tub on this thing huge and the camp that he unpacked because when he camps he he like base camps he had so much stuff out it was the amount of stuff he could fit in there. he slept in the back of it so these trucks if you set them up they can be home on wheels yep. like legit home well on wheels. Truly. i would not do a tray and canopy on a vehicle like that just use the tub um unless you want to spend a shit ton of money and not be able to sleep inside it or you want to sleep on top of it. There's the Silverado. This is a YouTuber called Aussie Destinations Unknown. Yep. They've just had a new truck built by Big Dog Builds, I think. And that's their new that they've is, been to they, they tour in an American truck previously. Do they to sleep this. inside this one? This one has this one has a canopy on it. Just they, so yeah, so no they screen. don't they they tow a caravan. But this yeah, okay. this is like the the latest one that I've seen that is sick. It's yeah. a Silverado. It, Unbelievable. It does look absolutely awesome. Um, and I so wonder cool. if they have upgraded it and they are using an MR license because there's a... They few, are, I think. Well, yep. yeah, they'll have to because what I'm looking at here, that's not going <laughs> to that's yeah. not gonna pass. No. Nah. Look at the size of it. Like. <laughs> yeah, but whose car really so. does pass these days with 
GVM. Sad. Um, anyway, we, we have to keep moving because Fred's asked a lot and we're, yeah, so, we, we're, we're having a good chat here. Hopefully people are enjoying this because I am. Yeah. But we are just – it's pretty much just feel like us three talking. Fred's, it is, Fred's it is a bit of us. Fred's listening. Um, We've got one. <laughs> so the, let's so, – but it's it's the outback travel thing. I think we haven't really talked about that. Yeah. So, well, why don't we connect it then to why? What are the what are some reasons that you may choose one of these American trucks over something like a Land Cruiser? Because I've got my ideas, but it doesn't relate to outback travel and the actual okay. ins and outs of what yep. the car can offer. Mine mine sits on um, the price. So say that it's a little bit hard because the Ram TRX is so expensive, but there's cheaper. Dodge Rams out there, or you go secondhand. The GMC is too big for me; don't need it. Um, the F one fifty is interesting, but if I'm getting one of these, I want a V eight. So what I'm trying to say is, if I can find one of these for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, I buy a Land Cruiser for a hundred and a bit at the moment, and put heaps on to get some of the modern comforts of what these vehicles already offer. You're actually you're meeting up around the one hundred and fifty mark anyway for some of these yeah. Land Cruisers. Plus, you get the comfort. But I'd it's say just drive in. You just grab it, drive out. Sorry, and yeah. you got you've got all of that for your one fifty. Yeah, this is this is monumental amounts of money we're talking yeah. about here. But I, I think one thing is the cost. You're getting everything you need straight away, and the comfort of one of these trucks. Can I just throw something at you that's going to throw a spanner in the works? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Taking in your screen here. Yep. Because that's built for off road. It's got all the leather seats, all the comfort, all the stuff you're talking about. That 130 grand, it's got everything you need. You don't actually yeah. need to put anything else on it. Put that against one of those trucks. One of those trucks, yeah, it's got everything inside it, but you still don't have the bull bar. Um, yeah. It, I mean, you still would need some kind of bar. You don't need something with hoops on that because it's sitting so high. But you would need some things for it. It's not even tow ready. Yeah. I, I, I don't think I don't think I'm would be in the market for one of these. I'm just saying what it's got over a Land Cruiser is the comfort straight away. Yeah, and but, but which Land Cruiser? Oh, I'm thinking 70 Series. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, yeah. Uh, a lot of Neva's got it over a 70 Series. I'm thinking series. 70 Series. But I, like, <laughs> yeah. I, I just, well, I let's, say, let's say a 300 Series or a 200 Series because <coughs> people who are buying a 200 or a 300 Series are looking at towing as well, right? Yeah, usually of, that's If you buy this, for. you're yeah. also looking at towing. Yeah. I think people who buy a 70 Series is probably not – in the same market as people who buy a 200, 300 series. Yeah. So yeah. let's look at it that way, right? What what, what, yeah. what would you buy? 300 series, Land Cruiser, comforts as well compared to these American trucks. So 300 to this? 300. Yeah, I mean, I, for practicality, it's 300. If, yeah. Say say price is no issue, right? You're looking at this, you've got, you've oh, got enough money no to issue. buy. I'm getting that, I'm getting that TRX. <laughs> For sure. Look, um, price-wise, I mean, depending on what you're getting, uh, the 300 is pretty close to, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like a, I think the GR is like 150 grand, even more now, you know. Um, I know when he did request us not to t- go down this line, but it's probably a good one to re- compare it to. So it it depends on what you're going to use the car for. That's what, that's what I'm saying. If yeah. it was going to be towing and it was going to be sticking to the main roads, I would pick... Um, one of those trucks over a 300 series. Yeah. I, I would actually pick one over a 300 series. Yeah, right. Because just three- purely because these trucks tow better. It's, yeah, just, just tow better. But if I'm going to go off-roading, yeah. like if I want like a bit of everything, well, then I'd need something a bit more adaptable. And then I also wouldn't be towing a big caravan. But if we're talking about sticking to the highway, towing a caravan – you're better off with one of those trucks, yeah, or a Tundra when they come out. I, I do really like. I'm a I'm a big fan. I just don't need one, but I'm a big fan of them. I reckon like if you were living not so much in the city and you're out of town a little bit, like it'd be imagine how fun it'd be driving one of them around. Imagine how fun that'd be driving to the Sydney show or the Adelaide show. That would be a real from there. Perth would be good. in one of them. Do you watch Yellowstone? Yeah. Okay, that's fan. that's why he likes. Yeah. Big <laughs> do you watch Yellowstone? <laughs> yeah, I do. Oh, what a show! Yeah, I stopped watching after a while. It's like, did you? <laughs> they got they got more lives than bloody cats, you know. So, so <laughs> what would you what would your top five mods for one of these be? <laughs> Dougie, you want to go first? <coughs> um, say you had a say you had a TRX. Yeah, that's the one you're leaning towards. <laughs> Does that need anything? What do you what What would you put on it? Oh. 
And like, I don't think mods means lifts or whatever like that, but you know, bull bar, you doing anything to the interior, you adding a battery to the back, you yeah, adding I mean, lights, like, what yeah, are you doing? Yeah, you put, you're putting a battery in in the back, I'd say that'd be one. I reckon Ronnie's point, but at the start of wrapping it, like if you've got enough money to go and buy one of these, like go and wrap it. Yeah. I reckon that's a big one. That I didn't think about that, but that would be one that I'd consider. Um, the TRX, it looks like it comes with like the tyres that, it, you know, probably don't even need to. I don't know if what size sort of rims, rims they're operating with. Mm-hmm. Do you need a bigger size set of rims with these sort of cars? Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to have bigger, I mean, I don't know what wheels they come out with. Do they come out with proper all-terrains or? I'd say that they'd have to. Yeah, you'd be surprised though. Yeah, maybe. They, they, I mean, they'll call them all-terrains, but it's, they're not like... It's got everything. Not like the all-terrains that you would buy if you were going to buy all-terrains, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right, so let's... Uh, if I was setting up, if you were going to set up an Ultimate Tour though, I reckon what, like throwing a canopy on the back, like a box canopy. So you do the train canopy? I'd do the train canopy if okay. I was going to tour in one of these. So that's 50 grand on top already. Money, well, money's not At shit. least. I'm already thinking about this. Though. Yeah, that's okay. a good point. No, I okay. don't know if I'd do it on the... I wouldn't do it on the TRX Ram though. That, that's got to stay as a... As a Ute, <laughs> you're tra- you're you're turning that into a. I'm, uh, I'm getting the Silverado drag racer. I'm getting yeah. I'm getting the Silverado and I'm putting a train canopy on it. Okay, okay. you're getting a Silverado. You're putting a train canopy on it. You are going to need a GM <laughs> upgrade <laughs> and an MR license. I'll get that. Okay, it is right. it so, is automatic. So, <laughs> Thank so you. let's say uh, that's all good. Dugo, you're doing battery canopy. Uh, tray. What, what what else did you say? I'd, on the Silverado, I'd, you'd get just a. I'd get a new set of tires because new set of tires. I don't know what one I'm getting. So I'm getting the standard one. Yeah. I'd get a new set of tires and a bar and a bull bar. There you go. Cool. You don't need it. I don't. I don't, don't think need you much. need to touch inside. Don't need much. No. But if you you know you're gonna put a radio yeah. on that in. Yeah. I don't know how yeah how right. technical you want to get. Fred, well, but. you know, let's let's stick with that, Ronnie. Are you anything <coughs> different from that? Well, yeah, I'll be the. GMC Sierra. He likes it, doesn't he? Well, that's the only one that I would I would pick out of these. Which is interesting because you've said in your notes, best overall Ford F-150. Best balance notes, of power, no, no. towing capacity, advanced no, that technology was, and features. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. <laughs> that was chat GPT. Uh, I put all the cars in. I that's said, what this is. I said, tell me the worst and best. And, and then it, it just spat that out. And I didn't really like what it spat out. So sometimes you, you get... So you know what? It's interesting though. Chat GPT. Best overall, F-150. Best for luxury, GMC Sierra. Best for off-road, Dodge Ram. Best for towing, Silverado. The GMCs yeah. look the most American. Do you know they how do. it gets the information though? It, it tells you where the information comes from. And when it said they're all like from these car magazines, I was like, oh, well, okay. Yeah, right. Don't trust them. This is a hard, it's a hard, there's a can of worms, this whole topic. Eh? It is. So let's yeah. stick to the, let's, let's stick so, to your five mods, Ronnie. What are you going? Okay, first up, I'm going to increase the fuel tank because I'm not stopping every fucking oh, 100 cars. think about that. So that's why Ronnie's the, the guy. Um, pardon my French. I don't You're going to have to because if you're driving with Duggar, he's, um, he's stopping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, three-stage rear leaf suspension. Well, hopefully I'm so far forward I won't feel that anyway. <laughs> we'll leave that in there. I <laughs> uh, will definitely put a bull bar on it because this is like you're going to be quite relaxed. You're not going to be quite as alert as in a smaller vehicle. So point. you're likely going to hit stuff at full speed. That's just how it happens. Um, yeah, the Allison 10 speed, that's quite nice. The Yeah, it's going to sit there roaring. Uh, what else would I do? I would leave the tub and I would see, I'm trying to go as mild as I can, but just go more practical. I would carry a spare carcass because I'm assuming these wheels are going to be bigger than what you can normally get everywhere. And what's that? That's, uh, that's four, I think. And then I would, um, save up a lot of money for fuel. That's my fifth one. Your fifth mod is fuel. That's just fuel money. Not a not a little fridge or something. Little um, little mini console. Don't fridge. they come with a console fridge? These days? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. So where two hundred grand? I'll be expecting one. Do you want to take the next one, Dugger? Sorry, I was looking at car sales. <laughs> um, where in Australia are you going to take these vehicles? And where would you where would you not take them? I think you can't, you, you'd You've be worried about them right? in the outback. Are you? well, You're not yeah. taking them to the outback. I'll, and you're taking him on main roads for for camping, for I'll touring. Look, you could take it a little bit out back, but it's got to be on one of those roads that a lot of people are on. Like, 
canning stock route I would not do because you'd just be holding people up because you, you'll probably get bogged on those crested dunes and stuff. It just wouldn't be good for that. I wouldn't take it down something like the Amberdale Highway because sections that are quite narrow and I'm sure some of them might have done it, but you're very likely to get a puncture in there. We had a few punctures while we we're out there. Um, yeah, actually, Tools punctured a brand new tire on that one. I remember that. Uh, oh, look, yeah, look, I'll stick to the main arteries, like outback <laughs> arteries. Okay, right. so like the butcher's track that's up when you head back. I down. mean, you could definitely head out there. But yeah, you you're definitely just head out like there. The, the real remote. Be prepared. Yeah, and be prepared to be stuck there for weeks because these manufacturers don't have x amount of millions of dollars of parts i wouldn't expect here and then if they did where would the parts be mm. so it's the same situation as any most other vehicles that aren't predominant here yeah so, all right so they do have a place in the australian market though, they do sure. they definitely that was do. the next question that was the next question you answered already because <laughs> i love it we can be going yeah for so uh and we sort of spoke about the it's a good topic though I'm it is. This topic. It is a great topic. I'm actually now yeah, like every week. You didn't again. really like it, did you? But now, now you're into it. No, nah, I now actually I just did like, like you I was came like, in with eight car sales tabs open. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do love them. Like I always keep an eye on them. But the, the Silverados. But then then Harry at the Norwell day when I saw Harry out there at the um, Norwell opening in Wangara, he said that he didn't like the Silverados. And I, you know, when you just back someone's word, like Harry's yep. word, I I respect. So now then I was off Silverados for a while, but now I'm looking at them and they look that good. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what he's talking about. Look, uh, Harry can be uh, opinionated uh, as, as he doesn't we, like. we all can. So if there's something he doesn't like. 70 series. It, like he, he does, he's not afraid to speak his voice basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which, which I like because if it's something um, I'm doing he thinks is not going to work or something, he will speak up. That's and good. I, and I that, like that. That's a, that's a good, good. trait. It's that a good is. trait. All right. So the next one. Configuration. What's the best one? Tub, tub and fiberglass canopy, tray or tray and canopy. Pick one. There's got to be limits though. Like, is no, it, is pick it one. No limit? No. I, I'm, I'm going from a price side, a price point of view because if you really, really want that car but you're not in a situation where you can afford to have the car, like you can't really afford to do much else, stick with a tub, yep. put a fiberglass canopy on it. You know what? Stuff the tub if you can't afford it. Put a mattress in the back. It's your summer car. I mean, yeah. yeah, just tub, tub, yep. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, overall, I, yeah, I'd have to say tub as well. You know what? Ultimate overnight camping vehicle. How? You don't need much at all. You have your tub. You throw your mattress in the back. You throw some blankets and stuff. Throw your kids in the car. Everyone will fit in the back. You could set up like a little. I yeah, I actually saw it. It popped up in my. Just seat. get a two seventy awning and swing that all the way well, around. Get a little projector, yeah. like That's a little a good one. little cheap projector. Put it on top of the roof, and then it'll shine at this bit of white thing you put up there, and then you can watch a movie. That's, pretty, uh, yeah, that's, that's a great okay? idea. Okay, I think a couple, so. of, I a couple think of ferry lights down the side. It's got to be tub You're set up, mate. You set yeah. up. I think tub. I think it's tub just overall. for price point mainly. Yep, and although I want to, it's too hard to climb up into a tray. I mean, look how big the car is already. It's huge. <laughs> yeah, huge. It is. Um, so what what one of these four are you getting? We've we've discussed why. The, let's just do this real quick. What are what are we what are we doing? Um if I'm I go am going I'll, I'll go first. Yeah. Because we like know it. where you're gonna go. <laughs> yeah. It's it's the Ram. The Land Cruiser. Yeah. The Land Cruiser three hundred. No. I would go for the Ram just because I love that Hemi. The sound of it, the roar. Mm. I love it. Yeah, mm. <laughs> I would go for that, but cause, that's because I'm not I'm not towing, and I if I was going to buy one of these, I wouldn't really care about fuel usage. Yeah, and I'm not going anywhere that's heavy off road out back. Yeah, and they're cool. I could also set it up if I wanted to. Like you could set it up to you do, do whatever that. you want to. Yeah, yeah, that that would be my choice, and I really like the look of it. Dago. Yeah, I uh, I love that Ram. I do, but I think. If I was thinking for a long-term car, like if I was going to buy the, buy one and have it for the next ten years and set it up and tour with a family or whatever that is, I'd I, the Silverado for me. Overall, like uh, you know, I don't know why, but I'm actually looking on car sales here, and it's like there's some decent ones, really set up, low kilometers that you can get for 130 grand. On the on the next episode of the uh, podcast, <laughs> <which> is, <laughs> everything uh, on here. Yeah. <laughs> 
Duggo bought a Silverado. I won't be able to fit in the car park here, that's for sure. Put the range oh, on the back. Mate. Yeah, you won't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be able to. Silverado for me. And Mr. Land Cruiser. Oh, man. All right. So definitely. Mr. Caravana. Definitely the GMC Sierra. And <laughs> I would have an empty tub in the back and I would get a Suzuki Sierra on ramps to sit in the oh, back. Oh, hello. And I'll be taking that. Would it fit? To the beach. That's pretty cool, actually. I like yeah. that. I like that. GM, can you do the run sheet? Keep going on the run sheet, Jaden, because I'm typing in GMC Sierra. Yeah. Uh, okay. Carrying. So none of us would get the, the F-150. No. It's, no, I want to be it's, eight. It's ugly. <laughs> it, yeah, I, I agree it is. It's, it's, agree. Like they, it's like went back to the 1980s. You know, if you're going to go back in time to make a car look retro, go to the 60s or something. Something a bit more cool. Not yeah. the 80s, man. I don't know if it's going like to fit, Ronnie. 90s. Actually more like the 90s. It oh. reminds me of the Top Gear where they all come in with uh, a different style of car or a different car from that same style. Like they all come in yeah. with a JDM car or they all come in with an American truck, right? And yeah. they all fight for whichever one is the best vehicle in that side. We would all have picked a different car. All right. Well, this this could turn into a. We uh, would all rock up in three <laughs> different American trucks. So if there's a American car trucks, if you're if you're listening out there, oh, can we send please, us three? Can we test drive? Can we please let us test drive. Race them. Yeah. Well, you know you don't. I'm not want, licensed, you, but all right. You don't want to do <laughs> let that, me mate. Drive it. I'll Smack race. Smack you in the in the ram. Oh yeah, true. Actually, that's a very exciting Boom. thought. All right. Cool. All right. I will, Fred, I, I hope you're happy with that, I, mate. I had yeah. a f- serious. Car sales, a little scroll. Then, sorry, boys. I was a bit no, that's all right. Do you want to look? I, I would have like if I if I had a GMC Sierra to test drive. <laughs> I love like, that he says GMC. Sierra. GMC, <laughs> really? like I'm speaking like a Queenslander. Oh, oh, well, I probably shouldn't have said that. Wow. <laughs> well, like country <laughs> wow. back thing. Yeah, oh. out back in that wow. area. Wow! Oh, wow! You hate those people now, do you? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Out back. no, it's just it's 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 a twang. I actually like that accent. It's cool. Um, but I, I like the way to say "pill," the pill. Actually, John used to say "pill." <laughs> of course, he did. Um, mm. Cool. Do you want to move I on to the fire pit? Not yet, because oh, okay. If I'm just saying, like, <clears throat> if any of those cars and. I had an opportunity to take one of those across the desert. I would give it a go, but the tub would be full of a lot of tools and fuel. You'd have to carry so much fuel. I'm just, I'm just like constructively thinking, how would I get? Because Fred has said we have to pick one of these cars. And if I'm going to do some full drive, I don't want to just go to the beach or anything. I actually want to you've got to test these out. You've got to go across the middle. The longest shortcut, I reckon. If you can get one of those from A to B across the longest shortcut without any hiccups in any car is a pat on the back. But with one of those, I reckon that would be pretty impressive. Without a flat tire, that would mm. be the challenge. So if you've done that and you have one of those, please call us up and and tell me it's been done. <laughs> cool. With, without a flat. Yeah, without a flat. <laughs> yeah, there. Are we, um, we happy with that, boys? Yeah, let's go to around the fire pit. Around the fire pit. I have to say, it did feel a bit rogue and and um, and a runaway. <laughs> it was. No, it was it a good was. chat. Oh, actually, I don't know how people will find it, but we we had a good time. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, we don't really ever. We haven't really dived into the like massively onto them. Onto no, the well, we no, just, we've never really talked about them. We did then. Heaps actually, around though. We really yeah. did. All right, so we've we, got we, a few voice messages to get through, boys. So we're going to go as quick as we can, but also not rush. G'day, boys. Now, I've got a question for you. I've got a four and a half and a three year old little tucker with me. Now, what are some interesting things I can get them to do while camping to make sure that they love it as much as I do? Cheers, boys. Dad. Okay. Just um, don't worry about dirt. Don't worry about dirt. Bring, bring tools, bring like little garden tools so they can just dig holes and play in dirt. That's that's what I reckon. And then because you're, you're taking them out, just start it off real good. Go straight to the servo. Who gives a shit if it's 8 o'clock in the morning? Give them an ice cream. Off you go. <laughs> so straight away, they're going to be happy. They're going to be, you know, they're going to be like positive about going camping. Um, it's not a bad shout actually. That's yeah, actually a really step good Step off idea. on the yeah. right foot. Step Every on time you go camping, you get <laughs> ice cream. Right foot. And, go camping. 
to make things easier, put your kids to bed in the clothes they're going to wear tomorrow. So instead of bringing PJs, wow, chuck on the clothes they're going to wear tomorrow, which should be comfortable anyway, and then chuck them to bed in that. Because then they but literally roll out, they put their shoes on. Well, if they put their shoes on and off they go. Back in the dirt. Cheap UHF radios, just, just get the real cheap. Yeah, you can buy kids oh. ones. You yeah, can this buy, is like yeah. rapid fire. Like great tips. It's really good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely the little, little yeah. walkie talkies. Yeah, yeah, but make sure they're on a different channel. And if you're doing a combo and there's other kids, what's that movie? Goodness sake, different channel, different channel. The one with Ice Cube. <laughs> nah, it's Grown Ups. Where the I'm pretty uh, sure it's Grown Ups. Oh, with they, the um, cups and the string. No, oh, maybe it's not Grown Ups then. No, it's on American Pie. Ah, uh, yeah, it's American Pie. One of the American Pie movies. <laughs> And the kids have got the walkie-talkies and they're like, oh, they're, yeah, and they're, they're, yeah. the two, they're, the they're in their house and oh, then the, the dad's man. like, go on, boys. And then he like ducks on. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, he's right into it. They're all at the PlayStation listening. That's funny. Yeah, it's yeah. Great, great movie. <laughs> That's great. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Too. That's great. Anything else, Ronnie? Oh, I'm in a bit off track there. Um, Sorry <laughs> <laughs> What else? What else? Yeah, look, don't worry if they get too dirty, hey. And... Uh, at night, if there's a lot of bugs around, don't give them a torch in the area where there's bugs because for some reason they'll play in dirt all day. There'll be ants and crap all over them. But at night when they're tired and then they see a, a concentrated light beam where there might be a whole bunch of bugs, all of a sudden they just freak out. So what do you do at night with kids that age, so three and four and a half, when there's – you know, like what do you do at night time when the, the – you know, you want to sit around and have a beer at the fire, and you basically sit around the fire. But the kids can't, you know, they can't go. On, they can't go off too far, and they won't. Around and yeah, talk. and they won't because it's dark. But they're not. You can't expect them to sort of sit like marshmallows is a, is a massive one. But you can't have eighty three marshmallows and then go to bed. Depends <laughs> if they've been there. Like if they've been outdoors all day, they'll, they'll be they'll be happy. yeah true. They'll be smashed. They'll be yeah. so tired. Um, it's, good it's it's funny they actually asked to go to bed. They're like, Dad, can I go to bed now? <laughs> but they they actually do. It's, yeah, it's, it's good. Uh, I so like those little tips though, like the yeah. step off yeah. on the right foot with the, you know, make the leaving fun. Like it's like we're going camping, so yeah. we'll grab, 100%. A, yep. grab something from the servo. Yeah. What, what was the oh, the bed, into bed with the clothes? In, into bed, the clothes are going to wear day. tomorrow. That's a, yeah. that's a been there, done that before yep. type of tip, that one. Yeah. Yep. And hit up hit up uh, Destination Full Drive for a shower tent because if you've got girls, you can pull up anywhere and they can they – can, um, experience the bush like a man you can you know because we can just walk behind a tree and have a pee mm. for the ladies it's a lot easier having a a tent so they, they don't have to walk out in the bush they can just right there yeah destination four drive good tip it's a good yeah. one. that that's probably the best one because at the shower tent goes up and down up and down up and down although i don't have a destination four drive one because that's one's bigger i've got the quick quick pitch one it's so quick down so quick up and you're, you're on the road again yeah like it um, I, like I could go all day with this, so we'll, we'll move yep. to the next one. Yeah, good ones. I like them. Yeah, I like those. Yeah. Yeah. Next one. Hey, lads. Luke from the loop here. Hope you're all doing well. Um, answer your question. You uh, yeah, it's a yep. salt mine, well, farm, because uh, actually, we actually grow it. Oh. So we export about 1.3 million tonnes of salt a year. Um, oh, yeah, it's been here since the 60s, this place, but yeah, it's pretty unique, this joint. Uh, been here nine years. Um, lots to see where, because it's a closed town, um, you need to be sponsored to come in, but there's a lot of good, really good camping here. Um, if you Google Earth it, you see the actual town site, then there's a two prongs there. You've got Harrison Prong there, we call it the Biosphere. Bit of history up there from the old pearling days and just <laughs> awesome camping. Um, yeah, if you ever want to come up, uh, happily sponsor you, so you can have a look around and I can show you around and, um. Oh. Yeah, that's the gist of it. And thank you, Ronnie, for the feedback. Nice and honest. I just thought I'd put it to you. And uh, Liam, sorry, mate, but uh, car on the lines. <laughs> not bad. Yeah, not bad. Uh, Ronnie, I think oh. you, you said that uh, you can't always respond to all your messages. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that now was that's triggered me now. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. now. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, great. That's cool. Thanks, yeah. Luke. That's but, actually a really, that was really interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, Luke, another question so you can answer again. <laughs> the, the salt mine. So, uh, 
We were hanging out up at Onslow and there's a salt mine up there too. And we we're talking to one of the guys. He, he pulled up as we were filming on the side of the road near these termite mounds. And he come up and we were kind of mid filming, but you know, like, you know, we we're in the middle of nowhere. So I gave him the time of day and I was asking him about the salt mine. He was telling us that the cars last less than a year <laughs> that are on the, you know, on the grounds driving around. So I'm keen to know if you have the same situation up there, like they just fall apart. Within a year, hmm. the body that is. G'day, lads. Anthony here from Adelaide. Absolutely love the content. Keep it up. Just wanted to ask what you feel the most essential information is you need to know before servicing your car. This is coming from someone who isn't very mechanically minded. And I feel that the information out there through all of these platforms, YouTube, Reddit threads, is quite daunting. So, if you could give your top three tips in regards to what to do or what to know before servicing your car, like I own a 76 series, so maybe you could apply that rationale to that. Thank you. Over to you boys. Yeah. So, yeah, Jaden, is there anything specific you do? For the car? Mm. Um, not really. The same, treat it the exact same way I would a normal full drive uh make sure you know your trans oil your diff oil what you're getting uh engine oil obviously coolant i spoke to a guy at twitter today and he was he was telling me to make sure you get pink coolant yeah. for your for your car yep um so just make sure you know what kind of coolant you're getting obviously he's got a 70 series so pink coolant um know your oil you, filters sorry, fuel filters air filters if the coolant, apparently if you put the pink coolant in or the Toyota coolant in a, in a car that doesn't use it, apparently it's quite acidic. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's why, it, yeah, okay. I think it's more of a that way than the other, but interesting. I could be wrong. So just whatever color you have, stick to that. Yeah, Yeah. don't don't mix coolant. That was another one. Unless you have to to get yeah. it out. Unless you have to, but try try your best not to. And if you do have to do it, then I would say drain your drain it and then re redo it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, I wouldn't say it's too difficult servicing your car by yourself. It's something you can definitely learn to do. Yeah. Um, make I, sure you're putting – make sure you keep track of all your bolts and everything that comes out has to go back where it came from. Um, yeah, that's it. I don't do – don't, don't, don't um, – just be careful. You can You can put the wrong bolt back in the wrong spot and break stuff. Don't over tighten things, but don't leave them too loose. Um, <laughs> he's having, he's having, uh, yeah, I'm having gearbox flashbacks. PTSD. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, just, just, yeah, know, know what you're going to get. All you need trans diff, engine, coolant, and your filters, oil, fuel, and air. And that's it, right? Unless. Yeah. Unless you're doing a bit, a how, bit how more. Often, how so, often on the 76? <clears throat> well, that's the interesting part. So, so if you look in the back of your service manual and it, yours should have it too, it will have like a section right at the back. So look at that because it will tell you different intervals if you're forward driving. Oh, yeah. So if yeah, you're working about this heard before, about this, yeah, yeah, if you're working your car a lot harder, you, you actually <laughs> I've heard halve, about this from you halve your intervals of um, oh, oil, well. oil droppings. So yeah. you've got to drop your oil more often. Um, what I'd also do before you even get to the service is if you're on a big trip, bring the extra air filter, bring the extra yeah. diesel filter because if you're starting to get dirty air and all that kind of stuff, well, you could probably you know, make servicing you know, better because you're already, you're, already, you're already doing stuff before the service. Um, definitely before, before any trip, always do your oils. I reckon, especially yeah, if it's yes. been like, I mean, if you've done the oils like 5,000 Ks ago and you haven't really done off-road but you're going on a big trip, that should be fine. Uh, bearings, if you've been through mud and water. Yeah, bearings check, is a good one. Check those. It's really, actually really important to check that. If you hand your car in for servicing, ask them to visually check the bearings, especially if you have been through that kind of stuff and you might be taking it somewhere far away. Because bearings, when they go, there's not much you can do unless you have the spare ones with you. Uh, <laughs> rotating tires as well. Yeah, rotating tires. Um, yeah, it's not really something I think about because I'm often no. changing tires from one car to another. Yeah, must be nice. There we go. 
Um, no. <laughs> yeah, it's actually backbreaking work, mate. I, I yeah. can I can change two cars over in like an hour flat. Jeez. Yeah. Um, Just don't ask me to walk afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> do you do that in your jobs, like you do your gym workout? No, no, no. Actually, it's so cold now. <laughs> oh, it is cold. Yeah. I'm in socks, trackies, but it doesn't take long. The shirts off. It <laughs> nice. gets yeah. get a feedback. Yeah, yeah. feedback. <laughs> hey, wife, how's his how's his look? How's the arm? Do you have a mirror? Do you have a mirror in your gym? There's two mirrors, but it's so dim you can't see. Oh. So I start my gym workout with red light. So oh, yeah. I have red or, or orange light because yeah, the sun right. sun's not up yet. And yeah, then it right. kind of gradually wakes me up. Oh, yeah. As I'm in there. Well, actually, this new workout is just stupidly hard. You know how we normally do our podcast quite early now? Yeah. We should just bring the gear up to Ronnie's and do a – Yeah, do a workout. But we have to all be in our jocks. Ah, uh, one of those ones. Yeah. Like we have to be in Ronnie. – we're in Ronnie's habitat. Hey, shout out Speedo if you definitely want to listen to, not to watch. Yeah, we don't bring cameras. Don't bring cameras. That'd probably be weirder if we didn't bring the cameras. It's just us yeah. three doing <laughs> gym in our job. Yes. Although having a having yeah, a captain would, there weird. from a, from a football club, we might get a lot more ladies on board. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually a good point as well. <laughs> hey, it's maybe we we'll just have all the cameras on Dago. Nah. Yeah. Um, one, one more thing for Anthony is just. Careful where you put your your oil containers when you're when you're waiting for the oil to come out when you're oh. getting this sump plug out. Just yeah. that oil can come out fast and hot, mate. So just have them ready. Like have them ready. Have them ready. Yeah, because you can yeah. end up with oil all over all over the place. Apologies, Dad. And if it's the first time you're doing it, make sure your mate's filming you. <laughs> yeah, please. You can't Hi stop guys, it goes. Josh here from over in Dubbo. Just wondering if you'd come across any adaptions for the can headlights on new Toyotas to hook driving lights and things up to them. It'd be great for your opinion on that one. That'll keep you busy for a bit. Oh, so the, the new Land Cruiser adapter for the back of the lights to yeah, connect. For the, for the can headlights. Yeah. For the can, the what? Can headlights. Oh, the candles? The can? Not sure. Just I think it's the shape. Can head like, they're like a, a, yeah, they're like a can, the round ones. Really round. The really round. Oh, like on the new 70. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. So those adapters, you can get them. At, I saw them on a website, but they're like, they have to order them in because I installed some spotties on my vehicle and they gave me, with the kit, they gave me like, the, I bought the wiring harness and in that kit, they gave me um, just your standard one and then like one that's in the Hilux. And I was like, cool, this would be like the one in the Hilux. Nope, it's completely different. So there's a specific one you got to oh, – you can see them on, online. I think Nava. I think Nava do them actually, yeah. Nava do a fair I bit should of just, stuff. I should have bloody ordered them anyway because, yeah. But we're in a hurry. We're going to Shark Bay for that trip and I just wanted them on. So we'll literally install them the night before we left. Jeez. Last minute. There you go. Um, eBay. Jeez, I know it's late, boys. I had one. I only checked the messages. Oh, the only thing I've got to do after this is sleep anyway. Like, yeah. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Doug goes antsy, mate. He wants to, he wants to run. <laughs> Look at him. I'm hungry. <laughs> can finally eat again. Fuck me too, mate. You guys here, if you heard a stomach, it's Doug goes. <laughs> You've been going off back there, have you? Oh, a little bit. I actually haven't yet. All right. Chris V and Tilly's big lap on Instagram sent us in a message. They sent us in their troopy, big blue, midnight blue troopy. Uh, one of the last V8s of the production line last year, apparently. So, uh, hey guys, didn't want to do the voicemail. Hate the sound of my own voice as I'm originally <laughs> from Manchester. So think Oasis. <laughs> oh, yeah, we can. Yeah, we <laughs> I would have I mean, loved it. Um, gold. <laughs> anyway, uh, would you consider chatting about actual four-wheel drive tracks like the Gib, Canning, etc.? We have done the Canning uh, chat and we did that with Matt from Overland Travelers. Yeah. Go check that out. That's Matt a good episode. Holly. Yeah, Matt and Holly. <clears throat> Um, I've watched some of Ronnie's YouTube videos, which I love, but I wondered if you'd incorporate that into the pod. Um, we're heading north in two weeks. We live in Perth. We're about to do the gib for the first time and done a fair bit of research on what to expect, but always good to hear what to expect straight from uh, the horse's mouth, aka Ronnie. Uh, what to expect, what to be careful of. Um, their setup is a troopy with a lift and a JB caravan, off-road van. Uh, it's their first time doing the gib and they'll be putting it Going to be putting it through the through the paces. So, have you got any tips, Ronnie? Yeah, I mean, the most main tips will be it's a lot of most of it's gravel, even though people are freaking out. That's going to be tarmac eventually, but it's going to take them ages. 
I don't think it'll be tarmac for a long time. So corrugations and corrugations there are fairly decent. So lower your tire pressures and particularly on your trailer as well. If your trailer is quite light compared to your car, don't be scared to go down a fair bit. Just don't go too fast. Uh, you wouldn't want to anyway in corrugations. On corners, definitely slow down because those corners are super corrugated. If someone's coming the opposite way, uh, just slow down. Make it obvious you're slowing down because hopefully they'll slow down as well because it will save you from a lot of dust in your filters. And you see cyclists, slow down as well. Um, yeah. Other than that, when you camp, there's heaps of free camps along the way. If you find yourself at a – you score like a nice little secret spot – and some locals come up and claim that you need to pay them to stay there. It's not really true, just so you know. Um, yeah, so you might get that in some places, it does happen. Apart from that, just, um, yeah, go to, the, go to the really good spots early. The earlier you get there, you will, you will beat the tour buses because think of a whole group of like people who are in these eco tents, they gotta pack up every day they take a little bit of time. So if you just get up, crack a dawn, you're going to uh, have a much better experience without having a busload of people there as well. So, you know, when you go to Bell Gorge and um, Tunnel Creek, all these places. Uh, and when you do the offshoot roads, they are way more corrugated than what the Gib is as well. Um, I think that's probably about it. If you have a very odd sized tire, bring a spare carcass just in case because I mean, you might only puncture one, but it's nice to have your other one without having to worry. I was around Mount, Eliz Mount, around Mount Elizabeth. There's a roadhouse before. I forgot what it's called. That is probably your best chance to get um, uh, some of those spare parts, you know, like fuses and particular size tires and things like that. They make a fair bit of – they do a fair bit of uh, repairs there from memory. That is about it. Take your time. Great. <laughs> Just listen. Oh, no. Just listen. We're going to get banned on YouTube. Oh, does this... Okay. Just listen. Lyrics. A lot of Friday nights up under the stars Get you where you want to know And it'll get too far Oh no, he's, uh, he's been we, looking for that the entire podcast. <laughs> I've really switched off during this podcast at times. <laughs> he, um, Are you still concussed, thought, mate? Uh, <laughs> are, you, are you okay? No, I've been on car sales, and <laughs> I then was... I just I just thought about it because I couldn't really I couldn't really help out on the seventy six yeah. questions and all that, and then I was like, oh, actually, <laughs> I was convinced. You know what I've got? <laughs> <sighs> I was convinced he was going to buy a seventy. But now I'm not. <laughs> yeah, now you're not sure. <laughs> oh, oh man. Yeah. Anyway, that was a good song. Oh, oh, that is a good song. That's actually yeah. Probably can't put it on though. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Hopefully, we can still just delete it, it and I'll wrap it up. Are we <laughs> done? I, I cut. I accidentally cut into the um to the finish of that question. Though, if we're all of a sudden nah, back, hopefully it's all Chris good. and um V and <laughs> if we're all of a sudden back, it's because. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's because of a copyright <laughs> issue that oh, Tuggo's made. Is that, is that a thing? I can't, do, I can't just It's play. fine. No, it's all good. It's like, you uh, know. Just delete it. We'll just, we just won't make money off this YouTube video, <laughs> which we <laughs> don't. We, we barely do just anyway. Just cut that part is out. All right. <laughs> all right. I'm going to throw to Jaden just cut a bit of me singing. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. It's still there. <laughs> I don't know, but if you I'm, has, I'm just covering it. Um, oh, well, I think we're done. God. We've been oh, doing We're going yeah. over ages. Yeah, yeah. We're so done. We're done. Tuggo's about to eat the T-shirt behind I will say one thing. If you've sent me any, if you've sent us a question on Instagram oh. and it hasn't been answered yet, I am getting to them. We're getting to them, but we've got a lot oh, of voice messages I'm not the to get only through. One. So we no, I've I've replied to them at least, Ronnie. So you can you can <laughs> sit down there, mate. Ooh. Um, Ouch! But we are we're, we're getting to them. We're getting to them. Uh. Um, so please be patient, and if it's an urgent question, send me another <laughs> message. And <laughs> you still wait the same amount of time. No, <laughs> and if you want to ask me a we'll question. Send uh, the full drop podcast the <laughs> question. Don't send Ronnie a question. All right, happy boys. Happy. Let's let's wrap. Sorry, up. I went a bit rogue at the Thanks. end there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks to Fred Thanks for an for episode. Listening. Yes. Thanks to Fred. Um, and 
Let's that, get out of here. That was a good rabbit hole. Yeah. Dangerous. We made it a massive rabbit hole. Thanks for sticking it's around, about listeners. A, about $150,000 yeah. plus rabbit hole, that one. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll All be right. back. Plus, Be plus, back plus. next week yeah. with more rabbit holes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotta go. Four wheel drive podcast driven by Shelter. That's the American four wheel drives in Australia. Yeah, it is. Like anyway, Southern Ruben, Let It Ride, Socials, Four Wheel Drive Podcast, and Instagram. Episodes over on Back Chats YouTube if we've still got the license or whatever you call it over here. Uh, and patrons, we love them. Thank you. We certainly do. And if you have one of these American cars, you better hope there's a gas station around in 30 miles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>